Okay, how's it going, everybody? So we're going to read some more Karl von Clausewitz. Uh, this is an introduction to On War by Clausewitz. Let's go ahead. It's 1827 is when this was, uh, is when it's dated. So let's go ahead and get into this introduction of On War. That the conception of the scientific does not consist alone or chiefly in system and its finished theoretical constructions requires nowadays no exposition. System in this treatise is not to be found on the surface, and instead of a finished building of theory, there are only materials. The scientific form lies here in the endeavor to explore the nature of military phenomena, to show their affinity with the nature of the things of which they are composed. Nowhere has the philosophical argument been evaded, but where it runs out in to, into too thin a thread, the author has preferred to cut it short and fall back upon the corresponding results of experience. For in the same way as many plants only bear fruit when they do not shoot too high, so in the practical arts the theoretical leaves and the flowers must not be made to sprout too far, but kept near to experience, which is their proper soul. Unquestionably, it would be a mistake to try to discover from the chemical ingredients of a grain of corn the form of the ear of corn, which it bears as we have only to go to the field, to see the ears ripe. Investigation and observation, philosophy and experience, must neither despise nor exclude one another. They mutually afford each other the rights of citizenship. Consequently, the propositions of this book, with their, with their arch of inherent necessity, are supported either by experience or by the conception of war itself as external points, so that they are not without ab abutments. This is in parentheses here in a lighter text. That this is not the case in the works of many military writers, especially of those who have aimed at treating of war itself in a scientific manner, it is shown in many instances, in which by their reasoning the pro and contra swallow each other up so effectually that there is no vestige of the tales even which were left in the case of the two lions. It is perhaps not impossible to write a systematic theory of war full of spirit and substance, but ours hitherto have been very much the reverse to say nothing of their un unscientific spirit and their striving after coherence and completeness of system. They overflow with commonplaces, truisms, and twaddle of every kind. If we want a striking picture of them, we have only to read a Lichtenberg's extract from a code of regulations in case of fire. If a house takes fire, we must seek above all things to protect the right side of the house, standing on the left, and on the other hand, the left side of the house on the right. For if we, for example, should protect the left side of the house on the left, then the right of the house lies to the right of the left. And consequently, as the fire lies to the right of this side and the right side, for we have assumed that the house is situated to left of the fire, therefore the right side is situated near to the fire than the left. And the right side of the house might catch fire if it was not protected before it came to the left, which is protected. Consequently, something might be burnt that is not protected, and that sooner than something else would be burnt, even if it was not protected. Consequently, we must let alone the latter and protect the former. In order to impress the thing on one's mind, we have only to note if the house is situated to the right of the fire, then it is to the left side, and if the house is to the left, it is the right side. In order not to frighten the intelligent reader by such commonplaces and to make the little good, that there is distasteful by pouring water upon it, the author has preferred to give in small ingots of fine metal his impressions and convictions, the result of many years' reflection on war, of his intercourse with men of ability, and of much personal experience. Thus, the seemingly weakly bound together chapters of this book have arisen, but it is hoped they will not be found wanting in logical connection. Perhaps soon a greater head may appear, and instead of these single grains, give the whole in a casting of a pure metal without dross. Okay, let's go ahead and, yeah, so, all right, well, that's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get into this. Uh, I'm not going to in this segment, but we're going to get into, uh, uh, you know, On War by Carl von Clausewitz. So, uh, yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Tumblr, Medium. Y'all have a great day, and do that a goey.